Okay, so before we start running things and kind of walking through this demo, I want to explain to you what exactly it is that you're seeing here on the screen. So at the top is a Jupyter Notebook um, that is actually running on a Docker container uh, within an EC2 instance that we have spun up. And that's what you're seeing at the bottom of the screen here in the terminal. Uh, so we've spun up an AWS EC2 instance. It's a P32X large, which comes equipped with a NVIDIA Tesla V100 GPU. Uh, and this instance has access to an AWS deployment of Modsy. And so on this uh, EC2 instance, as I mentioned, we have a container running um, where we're going to kick off all of these components of our model deployment, our automated model deployment demo that we've developed. And for the purposes of this demo, we've kind of broken this down into three main components. The first will be um, training the model, uh, training a couple of versions of the model and using MLflow to track uh, hyperparameters and metrics uh, resulting from those hyperparameters. Um, throughout the training process and we'll use the MLflow UI to visualize that. Uh, so once model training is completed, we are going to choose the best performing model and use what we're calling our model converter to be able to, uh, as I mentioned previously, containerize this model according to Modsy specifications. Uh, and finally, we're going to import a little bit of metadata that Modsy needs to be able to run the model. And at that point, we'll have a production ready uh, version of this new model deployed to Modsy. So I've just kicked off the first step uh, of this process, which is gonna be the model training and experiments portion. As I mentioned, we're gonna be using MLflow, uh, specifically the MLflow tracking API to be able to log uh, hyperparameters and resulting metrics for a couple different, uh, specifically two different versions of this model. And we're gonna see which model performs better and use that model uh, throughout the rest of this automated pipeline. So what you're seeing here is uh, we're basically going to train a couple of versions of a simple image classifier. It's not going to be a very useful model. That's not the purpose of this exercise. Uh, but really what it is, is uh, we've taken a few classes from the ImageNet data set, uh, images of tanks and images of warplanes, and we're just going to train a simple two class classifier that's going to be able to differentiate between images of, uh, of those two. And we've chosen a couple different sets of hyperparameters. Um, we're going to train uh, in a sequential fashion, although you could do this in parallel and monitor progress uh, while training is occurring. So let's go ahead and take a look at the MLflow UI. Um, we are currently logging our target metric of basically just validation accuracy, but you can log whatever it is that you want a specific to your task, whether you know for object detection, if it's mean average precision, or if you want to log loss, you can do that as well. So here you're seeing the MLflow UI, which is also running within our Docker container. And this main page corresponds with one experiment. Um, and in MLflow terminology, one experiment consists of several runs. In our case, it's gonna be two runs. And one run is a complete training of a model with a particular set of hyperparameters. So here you're seeing one of those runs because we are running uh, these trainings sequentially, not in parallel. But once this is completed, another one will pop up. Uh, but the great thing about MLflow is that in an organized fashion, you're able to see the input hyperparameters and the resulting metrics. Uh, and as training is occurring, you're able to actually go in and monitor the progress in this nice graph of your target metric over time. So let's go back to our main page here. And these green checks mean that training was completed. You know, we had a pretty tiny data set and uh, we didn't train for that many epochs for the purposes of this demo. But here are our final metrics, our validation accuracies. And so what we can see here is that uh, one of the models performed significantly better than the other. Um, actually, we got 96% accuracy here. So we're gonna go ahead and use that one. So we go back to our Jupyter Notebook here. Uh, again, we're gonna go to the second component now, which we're calling the model converter. So what's gonna happen, uh, let me go ahead and kick this off and, and I'll talk you through what's going on here. We are going to choose, go back to the MLflow logged metrics, choose the model that performed better and pull the corresponding model weight. Then we're gonna go ahead and take those model weights and put them into a particular directory within a repository that we've put together that's ready to accept those model weights. Uh, and this will result in a Modsy compatible, Modsy deployable model container. Uh, as I mentioned, really the only requirement that we have is that you are able to containerize your model and what that uh, according to Modsy specifications. And what that entails is really implementing three main API endpoints. And we provide extensive documentation and even some template code that in which a lot of that is actually implemented for you. So it'll be super easy for you to be able to integrate your trained model into that code. Um, so that's what we've done here. We've taken the best performed model weights, placed them into the uh, container repository that we've put together. And 
We've also automated the process of building the, the resulting Docker image and pushing that to AWS ECR, uh, Elastic Container Registry. And so this message at the bottom um, is an indication that this whole process was successful and we now have a new Modsy deployable uh, model Docker container image inside ECR. So now we're ready to go through that last step, uh, which we're calling the model importer to actually get the model into Modsy. So let's go ahead and kick that off. What's happening here is that the user is required to fill out a little bit of uh, information inside a YAML file. Um, these are things like timeout values, uh, you know, specifications of hardware resources that, that this model requires in order to be able to run, as well as optionally some technical details uh, that will be displayed in the model details page that you're going to see in a little bit here uh, within the Modsy model marketplace. That'll really help other data scientists, other users of your instance of Modsy, uh, be able to understand what the model does and how well it performs. But again, that's optional, and, and we'll see an example of that in a second here. So this 200 response means that that process was successful as well. And um, so now we've got a new production inference ready deployed model into Modsy. So let's go ahead and take a look at what I mentioned a, a little bit earlier, the model marketplace. What is that? So here's the Modsy model marketplace. Um, here we have available to you a wide range of pre-trained AI models, many of which uh, the Modsy data science team has contributed. Uh, but also we've, we've brought in a lot of top capabilities from leading AI organizations. And so if your organization has developed models that you would like to then monetize uh, via our Modsy model marketplace, please feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to start those conversations. Uh, finally, we do have some models uh, from the open source community here that are free for use. So let's go into one of the model details pages. Um, so for each of these models that we have available via the model marketplace, uh, we have a model details page. And so it's kind of up to the organization. So in your instance of Modsy, it's up to you to set whatever policy you want in terms of what information you want your data scientists to be including for models that they're contributing on this page. Uh, but for, you know, the models that come pre-trained and ready to go uh, with the product itself, we require a couple of different things. And so we've really tried to emphasize transparency. We want decision makers going through these pages to be able to get as much information as they can and make a decision on whether or not this is going to fit their use case. So at the top uh, is, a, is kind of a brief overview of the model's functionality. Um, we'll go to this demo page in a second. If you scroll down a little bit further, we provide some performance metrics. So, uh, you know, just on, on the left is a description of how well the model performs in certain situations, maybe some situations uh, where we've seen it struggle, as well as a description of, of what uh, kind of validation data set was used to generate these metrics. And then we have these concrete values here. So you can get a sense of how well the model is performing. If you scroll down a little bit further, in the technical details section, this is where we really like to provide uh, information that anyone, but particularly data scientists, will be interested in when they're kind of taking a look at this page. So things like, you know, what architecture was used and why, what pre-processing was done, what was the model trained on, um, all those sorts of things are here for you. And finally, if you scroll down a little bit further, we have a sample API request and API response so that developers who want to use this model can easily see how they need to structure their input as well as uh, get some information on how to easily parse the output, the inference results output of this model. So at the top, if you go ahead and click that see the model in action, it brings this page up. And for a lot of the models that we've contributed, we like to provide some sample inputs and outputs so that users are, who are considering using this model can see what it actually does and, and see the model in action. So here you're seeing our object tracking model track this vehicle as it's traveling down a highway and it seems to be doing a pretty good job. So the model that we just deployed, here's the model detail page for it. This is a real model it, it's now in Modsy and it's ready for scalable and, and secure inference in a production capacity. 